Hello everyone, Tactical Itch here, and we're back for more Total Warhammer 3 Early Access content. In this battle, me and my opponent, Human Boy Yes Yes here, will be going for an Empire Civil War. We're not actually bringing any DLC content just yet because we still don't have access in this battle, but we do have quite a few new toys for the Empire to showcase. Now, for the army builds here, I'm not bringing a Jade Wizard, not bringing a Bright Wizard, but instead a Gold Wizard. Yes, the Lore of Metal caster is available in hero format for the Empire now, no longer needing Balthazar Gout every time we want Final Transmutation, Searing Doom, or Plague of Rust, and instead we can go for a Gold Wizard and some other Lord. For the army builds here, Gold Wizard is coming in with Searing Doom and Plague of Rust while he will be supporting these Knights of Blazing Sun who are very good offensive cavalry with 42 weapon strength, 40 attack and 78 charge bonus. With the um, Grand Hammer of Sigma from Volkmar the Grim, these guys can dish out some insane damage if they get a charge and stack the overcast Plague of Rust onto enemy targets, allowing the charge impact to really shine through against the enemy defenses. Now for the rest of the army here, a front line of sheer numbers, swordsmen mixed in with a couple of spears on each flank, and then for more empire knights to provide more mobility and mass and charge impact damage. On the other side of the battlefield, a front line of swordsmen and spears for my opponent human boy yes yes, a second line of huntsmen for the anti-large fire power, empire also brought some great cannons as they are now improved, I believe having increased accuracy and just overall more effective in ranged combat. Further back there, Empire Knights guarding their rear and flanks, and for the single entities, Human Boy is really bringing a ton of single entities this time here. Balthazar Gout leading the army with Plague of Rust and Searing Doom. He is supported by an Empire Captain bodyguard coming in with just Hold the Line to provide a bit more of a sturdy defense. For the rest of the single entities, Witch Hunter, which is a rather interesting single entity now, not only having the accusation but also getting new abilities and items, Grim Resolve, a very useful item that provides immune to psychology and extra leadership to nearby units when the Witch Hunter is engaging in melee, but unfortunately for the Empire, for Human Boy, yes, yes, I did not bring any terror causing units, so the immune to psychology is largely wasted, but still, a very nice unit to help the troops hold the line. Accusation of course is still very staple and then he will be supporting a steam tank. Steam tank right now is actually much more effective in melee combat just doing more charge impact damage and um, wrecking any infantry and cavalry in general. We'll be seeing the steam tank action in the combat itself and now for the army builds that's basically it. So we'll be going into the battle itself and see how this Empire Civil War plays out. My army is pretty much just an Empire Rush build, so the Green Empire is gonna push forward, marching straight for the Red Empire's front line, trying to get into melee as soon as possible, lest they want to fall victim to all these great cannon, steam tank, cannon fire power. Now the great cannons are already aiming down at my Empire Knights, doing some nice damage to them, but unfortunately for the Red Empire, because of the tree lines over here on the sides of the deployment zone, the Red Empire can't actually get a line of sight onto my Green Knights of Blazing Sun, so they are actually moving forward untouched by the Red Empire's armor-piercing firepower. Very fortunate for me here, as Knights of Blazing Sun will be unchallenged and can just roll through the Empire Knights with their superior melee stats. I'll be dropping in a Plague of Rust upgraded version, and that persuaded these Empire Knights to pull back as they do not want to engage the Knights of Blazing Sun with their armor largely reduced. They will just get shredded on the charge, so instead this Empire Knight undebuffed version will have to go in and stop the, the Knights of Blazing Sun, but here comes two units of Knights of Blazing Sun, actually one of them pull out, but one unit of Knights of Blazing Sun with their massive charge bonus is already enough to shred through the Empire Knights, even with their heavy armor. The frontline engagement is a bit stagnant right now as the spearmen are holding and the huntsmen are providing some fire support to hack down the Empire Knights. But here comes Volkmata Grim here boosting the Knights of Blazing Sun with melee attack in terms of Grand Hammer of Sigmar and then so far bombardment. That was enough to break these Empire Knights from standing still. And the Knights of Blazing Sun are opening up this entire flank of Empire defenses rolling through the Great Cannons and possibly can shut down the other great cannon as well. Over here, Searing Doom from Balthazar Gelt 
chipping away some health off my Empire Knights, actually doing some really solid damage, a quarter of HP gone from there, but I will be returning in kind in the front line here, chipping away the health of the Spearmen. Definitely less effective use of Winds of Magic, but I do have to expand my magic somewhere, so might as well just drop it here. The Green Empire Knights over here are very depleted, unfortunately, because of all the crossfire from the Huntsmen and Cannons, but they will still be slipping through the gaps of the Red Empire defenses and will be running down some Huntsmen before being routed away. Now, because of the Knights of Blazing Sun breaching, overloading the entire flank over here, they managed to get into the backs of these Huntsmen, now rolling through the rest of the Empire frontline, possibly delivering some rear charges to wreck the spear, allowing the Swordsmen to push through enemy defenses, while on the other side, their Plague of Rust from Balthazar Gout debuffing my Green Empire Knight's armor. Though this helped the Red Empire Knights do a little bit more damage to the Green Empire Knights, the Knights of Blazing Sun swooping in from the other side of the battlefield, slamming into the rear of the Red Empire Knights managed to break them down. The Knights of Blazing Sun pulled back, but the Green Empire Knights having a significant lead in HP should be able to clean up the rest of the Red Empire Knights on their own. While I'm waiting on the mobility department, the fight is actually still quite even because the steam tank in the front line is unstoppable. Being a heavyweight war machine, it is effortlessly squishing all my infantry in the front line, while the armor piercing weapon strength is giving it a rather easy time to bully my armored cavalry as well. The steam tank is just steamrolling through my front line with nothing to stop it at all. Terror kicks in and the swordsmen, knights of blazing sun are all running away. With my front line in a mass exodus, Human Boy is gonna capitalize on this opportunity, pushing through with his single entity Goon Squad. Now they can move on to the next spears with the steam tank, and, and the spears will also be terrified from this rear charge. Von Watergrim here rallying his troops, now trying to finish off the isolated element of the Red Empire. Gold Wizard fighting in melee against the Huntsmen, trying to tie them down and stopping them from firing so that the knights can have a little bit more time to maneuver around the battlefield. Another Searing Doom at the back there, not sure who cast that, but definitely doing damage to both the Red Empire Knights and Green Empire Knights. But the Red Empire Knights are now faltering due to the damage sustained and especially with the Knights of Blazing Sun possibly going towards this fight. Actually no, I'll just let the Green Empire Knights win on their own as the Knights of Blazing Sun are returning over here trying to provide some support to their fleeing troops. And on the right flank of my army, I'm slowly winning this due to the sheer numbers of state troops. And the Gold Wizard is still fighting in the mix of a bunch of Huntsmen, but he's taking quite a bit of damage. I need to send over the Swordsmen to deal with the Huntsmen, but right now it seems that my Micro is still focused on elsewhere. Knights of Blazing Sun charging into the backs of these Spears managed to run down quite a few of them with that charge impact damage. Another Searing Doom possibly trying to aim at my Knights of Blazing Sun, but they managed to push through to tie down the Steam Tank, but the Steam Tank managed to terrify them once more. And I will need to figure out some way to deal with this Hulk of Metal as I don't really have the armor piercing other than Plague of Rust and Charge bonus on the Knight of Blazing Sun. But even with the Knight of Blazing Sun charging in, the Steam Tank with the point blank fire, with the Steam Gun and the Cannonballs, he managed to just break a bunch of these Knights of Blazing Sun with the armor piercing weapon strength. I will have more Knights charging in, Volkmar even charging into the battle himself. And the knights here just trying to surround the empire, the red empire single entities here, doing a little bit damage with their flaming lances. Now over here, steam tank finally receiving a plague of rust, but even after the minus 60 armor debuff, the steam tank still has 100 armor to help it tank the damage. The armor is still quite significant, so the Knights of Blazing Sun still struggles to do damage, but the Knights of Blazing Sun here being boosted by the Grand Shield of Faith to help them hold longer in battle will try their damnness to really poke down the Empire War Machine. Damage is going through the Steam Tank defenses, but it's going so very slowly, while the Steam Tank is definitely dishing out more impactful damage with the armor piercing. The lighting is a bit meh right now because we're in the middle of a forest. The burning lenses are helping a bit, but the shading of the trees is just a bit much. Anyways, all you need to know is that the flaming lances are just not doing enough against the steam tank as the Knights of Blazing Sun are taking more and more damage. Rancho of Faith is indeed slowing down the damage taken by the Knights of Blazing Sun, but the swordsmen are terrified and the Knights of Blazing Sun will be left alone in combat. 
Though the single entities, Balthazar Gelt and the Witch Hunter and the Empire Captain, they are all taking damage from the cavalry surround. Another Plague of Rust onto the steam tank. Now we're doing a little bit more significant noticeable damage to the Empire War Machine. That's possibly because the Knights of Blazingson are now out of the forest and are getting a more effective surround. Now more Knights of Blazing Sun on the far side charging into the steam tank trying to pin it down and stopping it from rolling through the entire front line but the mass of the steam tank is so great there's no stopping of this thing. 5000 mass compared to the Knights which are, let me just get their unit tap open, 1200 and because steam tanks count as very large units so they have extra advantage in terms of mass calculation so the Knights are struggling to stop the steam tank from pushing through. Though the single entities are now separated as Gelt is routed and the Witch Hunter and Captain are fighting for their lives. So that is the good news here as the steam tank is completely surrounded, HP running out while Belfazar is being routed and chased off. The steam tank is still kind of unstoppable right now but there's only so much of the Red Empire characters left. I can probably finish off the rest of the units other than the steam tank and then just surround it. Especially Vogmar the Grim is still at full health all thanks to the Jade Griffin item regenerating his health allowing the Green Empire to stay up in balance of power. Another great thing about the update is that the UI in terms of HP has been updated with regeneration rate and healing power displayed so you don't have to calculate how much HP you're getting from all the healing. A pretty good quality of life change. Anyways back to the game, Steam Tank is debuffed once again by Plague of Rust, Gout is routing away from the battlefield. As the Steam Tank is taking more and more damage, the Witch Hunter is pretty much the only thing left and where's the Empire Cannon? Yeah, over there. These three are the only things holding up the balance of power but the Steam Tank is just not doing enough damage to turn the tide while the characters are all getting whittled down by my sheer numbers of state troops. Another charge from Volkmar and the Steam Tank is taking a little bit more damage down to 2000 HP now. I'm sending in more and more resources just trying to really work down the Steam Tank. But at this point Human Boy recognizes the futility of struggle and will be throwing in the towel. I know I showed two replays winning against Human Boy Yes Yes but then again we played more than just two games so Human Boy probably has already posted the other replays on his channel or will be posting those soon. Anyways for the army performances I'm really loving this gold wizard addition to the Empire School of Magic, the Colleges of Magic because well we can finally use metal magic without using guilt and that allowed me to bring Volkmar the Grim with his self regeneration and all his buffs to help these knights of blazing sun to really shine in battle. Getting way above their cost and also a couple chevrons on each unit and in the end surrounding and beating down the steam tank. The Empire Knights also did okay overall and the state troops though didn't really get a good trade, just winning in terms of sheer numbers. The Empire side of Human Boy Yes Yes both are Empire now, so the Red Empire of Human Boy Yes Yes. The steam tank, I don't think it actually earned back its cost but it still did some good damage and a lot of kills for sure, ruining a lot of my state troops. The cannons unfortunately got shut down early so didn't really did much in the game while the Empire Knights got out traded hard by the Knights of Blazing Sun. Gelt did okay and the uh, Huntsman did alright as well. And yeah that's it for today's battle, I hope you all enjoyed this early access and a bit of a showcase of the Goat Wizard and what the Steam Tank can do. I know this is not exactly the greatest showcase of the buffed Steam Tank so we'll have another replay with the Steam Tank in battle later. Anyways that's it for today, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Itch, signing out.